Lessons learned from Ukraine and Israel point to multiple gaps in mobile artillery. We came down to the Albert America booth at AUSA to talk to Luke Savoy about those gaps and a new howitzer that Elbit America has developed called Sigma. We're on the show floor at AUSA with Elbit America to talk about the Sigma mobile artillery. But before we get into that, Luke, tell us a little bit about the, the gaps that are seen right now in mobile artillery. Sure. I mean, one is there's a general modernization needed in artillery in general. And we look at those gaps right now. One is crew. How do we get this to reduce crew workload, ergonomics of the crew, blast over pressure and survivability of the crew. And the next thing really is magazine and range. How do we shoot further and how do we shoot longer, sustainable uh, ways? Very good. And what are some of the lessons learned that um, we're seeing in Ukraine and Israel that will help define requirements? That's great. I, the, the, the big thing is artillery still matters. Uh, we saw it in Ukraine, we most certainly have seen it in Israel, where artillery has a significant and major role in sustained operations. Mm -hmm. uh, gone are the days where you're in and out in one or two days. In sustained operations, artillery is essential to the modern battlefield. And that's, that's the, the big thing. The second thing then is survivability. Towed systems are no longer survivable. They require a vehicle to tow the system, set up time, the number of people involved. It's just a complex logistical problem in terms of towed systems. So having mobile systems um, that have the ability to kind of go more places and shoot more directions and engage targets is critical lessons learned that we're seeing on the battlefield. Very good. So this is Sigma right here. Tell us yeah. about some of the details, including the, the ability for the turret to, to spin 360 degrees. Yeah, sure. So I think one of those critical things that we've seen out there is this ability to engage targets anywhere. Now, for some customers, like where we initially are building it with Israel, it was to be able to engage two targets in two different cardinal directions, you know, in, in quick succession. And that drove 360. But in the U.S. sense, it is about survivability. I can drive the vehicle, I can position it and cover in any direction. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to point the cannon because the cannon has the ability to maneuver independent of how the vehicle is oriented. So I can point the vehicle backwards so I can escape quickly. I can point it in all sorts of odd directions, but I can optimize it for survivability for shoot and scoot operations. And that's really the critical thing that 360 shooting brings to the table. Very good. And so the capabilities you've been describing are in full rate production right now in your South Carolina facility. Tell us about that. Sure. I think two great things about Sigma in general. One is it is U.S. made, period, dot. Um, so even though we are doing now 144 systems for the IDF, those are 100% made in the U.S. with the exception of the barrel. Um, we are a barrel OEM and do make barrels, but we made our system compatible with multiple barrels. So U.S. production and using a government furnished you know, foundries barrel, we're compatible with those. But when it comes to electronics, when it comes to the vehicle, we have a common vehicle uh, with our Oshkosh 10 by 10 that we have on this. Um, it is a U.S. platform. The other aspect of the Charleston facility is it was a greenfield project. We have proven uniquely that not only do we have a U.S. capability that we build and produce here in the U.S. today in full rate production, but we could actually create a plant like that and empirically have proven our ability to do a greenfield project to do it as well if we wanted to duplicate capacity in addition to what we're doing today. Thank you, Luke, and thank you for watching.